All right, in this video, I want to kind of put everything together that we've done. And so let's do some set equality proofs with some Cartesian products involved so we can see what's going on there. So the first one is that A cross B union C equals A cross B union A cross C. So again, there's going to be two di different proofs we're going to have to do. I'm going to call this the left side. Oh, it's not the pen I want. I'm going to call this the left side and this the right side just to make my life a little bit easier. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Let's do the first direction. In fact, let me write it like this instead. Let me write the subset. Let's say L is a subset of R. Okay, so we're going to pick an element from L. And I'm going to call it X comma Y just because we know it's an ordered pair. So just so it's easier to see, let's do it like that. Let x, y be an element of a cross b union c. And we want to show that this element x, y is also an a cross b union a cross c. So what does this mean? Thus, this means that x is an element of a since the first coordinate has to be an element of the first set and y is an element of b union c so what does that mean well that means that y is an element of b or y is an element of c so Let's do those two cases. Case one, y is an element of b. In that case, then we get that since x is an element of a and y is an element of b, we have that xy is an element of a a cross b because that's what a cross b is it's all ordered pairs where the first element is from a the second element is from b and now that we have x y is an element of a cross b it's an element of a cross b union whatever so that whatever will have b a cross c and then x y is an element of a cross b union any other set, but we'll pick that other set to be A cross C. Okay. Let's do case two. Let me underline these things to make it look a little better. Okay, case two. Case two is let Y equal, or sorry, be an element of C. Then, since x is an element of a and y is an element of c then xy is an element of a cross c and xy is an element of whatever a cross b union a cross c so we have in both cases if we start off with x, y, and a cross b union c, we have that it's an element of a cross b union a cross c. So the first direction is done. Okay, maybe I'll underline the direction in red. Okay, now let's do the second direction. The right side is a subset of the left side. Let's go ahead. Let x, y be an element of a cross b union a cross c. And if you didn't do it for the first example, maybe it's a good idea now for you guys to pause the video and try this second direction. 
same idea. Remember, you need to show that it's also an element of A cross B union C. Okay, now that we're back, let's see if we do it the same way. Well, if we know that XY is an element of A cross B union A cross C, it's in one or the other. So there's two different cases here. So case one is that XY is an element of A cross B, let's say. Well, this means that X is an element of A and Y is an element of B, and we want to show that XY is in A cross B union C. So we need to show, we have that X is in A, we just need to show that Y is in B union C. And using that idea that if Y is an element of B, Y is an element of B union anything, we can indeed just put that in there. So Y is an element of B union any set we like. So let's make that set C. Thus, our element XY is indeed in A cross B union C. And if we think about it, the argument is going to be the exact same in case two. So we can just write that. We could even have used a without loss of generality type argument here. But just to make things clear, we can do it in two cases. So case two is um, xy is in a cross c, because remember, just to make sure we understand what's happening, we started out with an element in a cross b union a cross c. So it's either in a cross b or it's in a cross c. So we're doing that second case here. and. Similarly, I'll just write similarly because the work is the exact same. We have that XY is an element of A cross B union C. And putting both directions together, we have a result. And we're done. So that one wasn't too bad. Again, the big thing is just making sure that you understand the definition of all of these objects, what it means to be in a Cartesian product, what it means to be in a union. If you understand that, then these aren't that bad. Let's look at the second part here. Same idea. We have that, oh, let me scroll down just a tiny bit. We have that A cross B minus C equals A cross B minus A cross C. Let's do the same thing. Again, I think it's a good idea. Try the first direction. L is a subset of R. Again, I'm calling this bit L and this bit R just for ease of notation. Try it, see if you can get this argument down. Um, and then once you do, unpause the video and see if we're doing it the same way. Okay, let's get back here. The first thing I wanna point out is that there's no way we can use a without loss of generality argument here because B and C are not symmetric. B minus C is not the same thing as C minus B. They're different, so there's no way that we can use a symmetric without loss of generality argument here. And same over here. A cross B minus A cross C. A cross C minus A cross B would be a different set. So we can't do something symmetric like that. Okay, enough of that, let's start. Again, we have a Cartesian product here. So let's let xy be an element of a cross b minus c. So what does that mean? 
Oh, wrong pen. I don't know how that got switched. Then, well, what does that mean? X is an element of A, and Y is an element of B minus C. And that tells us a little bit more about Y. Um, thus, Y is an element of B, and Y isn't an element of C. That's what it means to be in B minus C. You're in the first set, but not the second. Okay, remember what we want to show? We want to show that this is in A cross B minus A cross C. So it's in A cross B, but it's not in A cross C. Okay, so since X is in A and Y is in B, we have that this element XY is an element of A cross B, and since X is in A, and X, or sorry, Y isn't an element of C, well, really all we needed to say was Y isn't an element of C. It doesn't matter if X is an element of A or not. We need both things to be an element of A and C, respectively to be an element of A cross C. So if we know Y isn't, that's all we need to say. But since Y isn't an element of C, we know that XY isn't an element of A cross C. Again, we didn't really have to write this bit here. That's kind of superfluous. But it's kind of clear just to make sure you know what's what you're talking about with X. But Either way. And what do we have by our definition? Well, by our definition, we have that XY is an element of A cross B, and it isn't an element of A cross C. So since XY is an element of A cross B, and XY isn't an element of A cross C, by definition, well, X, Y is an element of the set difference of those sets, A cross B minus A cross C. And that's the first direction done. Let's do the second direction now. The right side is a subset of the left. So again, Let's assume XY is an element of the right-hand side. So A cross B minus A cross C. So it means that this XY element is in A cross B, but it's not in A cross C. Okay. So this means that XY is an element of A cross B, and thus X is an element of A, and Y is an element of B. Great. Also, since it's an element of A cross B minus a set, we know that that element XY isn't an element of the minus set, A cross C. Well, what does that mean? So that means, so thus, um, it's not true, and we'll talk about the logic in a second. It's not true that X is an element of A and X is an element of C. So what we're saying here, I'm going to write this logically in red here. We're saying it's not true that X is an element of A and, sorry, it should be a Y, not an X, my mistake. Y is an element of C. So I'm calling this here P and this Q just in this notation here. And using De Morgan's law, we can simplify this a little bit. It means that 
either P is not true or Q is not true. Thus, either X is an element or isn't an element of A or Y isn't an element of C. Now you could think, well, maybe we have to do two cases, but think about this. What do we know up here? We already proved that X is an element of A since X, Y is an element of A cross B. X has to be an element of A. So from above, we know that X is an element of A and thus it must be that Y isn't an element of C because we already know that this case can't happen because we've already shown X is an element of A. Okay, well what do we have? Putting it all together, since X is an element of A, Y is an element of B, and Y isn't an element of C. Let me highlight those just to make sure we know where they are. Here's X is an element of A. Here's we've shown that Y is an element of B. And here we've shown that Y isn't an element of C, since we know those are true. Well, what does that tell us? That tells us that X, Y, well, first of all, maybe I'll say this first. We'll say that Y is an element of B minus C, since it's an element of B but not C. And the ordered pair XY is an element of A cross B minus C. And let's just say putting both directions together, we have a result. And I'm done. So there you have it. This example wasn't too bad as long as you were very careful with what your set minus meant. In fact, um, assuming the left side was a subset of the right side, that one was, I would say, fairly straightforward. The right side, a subset of the left side, there was one small hiccup, but it was pretty small. When we got to this case where either X isn't in A or Y isn't in C, you had to remember that we already know that X is indeed already in A. So we know this case will never happen. So since one of these must be true, and we know it's not this one, since it's an or, it has to be the other one. It's at least one. And just writing it up at the end, we get that x, y is in a cross b minus c. Hopefully these two examples really help you um, get your definitions down for all of these um, objects and, um, and set operations, but also how to prove that two sets are indeed equal.